You are the medicine The only cure for everything I feel within Redeeming what was lost and all that could have been Oh, this is a healing kind of love You are the truest friend Staying through the night when I was at my end Comforting my heart till it was light again Oh, this is a faithful kind of love Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us, you're here with me. Wonderful Counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders. You are the final word. You alone decide when every page will turn So I will trust your timing, I will rest secure Oh, this is a steady kind of love Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace God with us, you're here with me. Wonderful counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us, you're here. The government is resting on your shoulders Your name says Matt, Sophie, and Dave, thank you all so much. All right, youngins, come on. Come up here. I got something for you to do for me today. Come on. No, not you. Just you. Come on, guys. I need some help. What's up? How are you? 
I like that bow. I would put some in my hair, but it's not long enough. Hey, how are you doing? What's up? I, got, I need some help today. Can y'all help me? You got any more youngins? We just got three. Come up here. I need some help. All right, what I'm going to have you guys do, if you don't care, is every lady that's in this building, I want you to go around and hand one to every lady, okay? This is their Mother's Day gift from the church. And you don't have to be a mother to get this gift because I'm sure you substituted from time to time as a mother. And so uh, you guys go around and pass those out to, to those ladies, okay? Go right back there and start. There you go, right here. Get these two ladies. That'll be good. We talk about $100 bills all the time. One of those might have a $100 bill in it. It might not. <laughs> Probably won't, but might get you excited anyway. Flip through there. Oh. <laughs> She's checking it. My mom hit a $100 bill on a plate or something, didn't you? A long, long time ago, like 40 years ago, we never have found it. It's somewhere at the house. <laughs> yeah make sure everybody gets one all you ladies get one of those all right youngins come back up here real fast you got any extra ones okay good thank you it's just a little book that's that's uh, from max lakato and andrea lakato titled he fights for you it's a short read you guys can use daily it's got 40 little things in there that you can do but let's pray you got it come on up here heavenly father thank you for these children thank you for their help today Pray your blessings upon them and upon their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all take off and go have fun. Don't have too much fun. I don't know if Drew can handle it. you smiling mothers here happy mother's day again to you today we want to honor you guys uh we want to honor our moms and we're going to go to a place in second kings uh the the, the story i'm going to tell you i'm going to give you an overview because it's too long for me to read it all but i would encourage you to go back and read chapter four of second kings 8 through 37 if you haven't already done so and to give you some background passage but the the verses i'm going to read to you is going to be in second kings chapter 8 uh, verses 1 through 6, and it's a story of a mother, and she's a lot of other things, too. You know, that, that's what mothers are. There are a lot of things. Uh, inventors, you know. My mom, before there was, like, those thermos jugs that, that we could go buy, you know, she would put those, uh, she would put my Mountain Dews in aluminum foil and wrap it about three times. Y'all remember that? Anybody else to do that and put it in your lunchbox? So it kept it cool for a while. Uh, but they're inventors. They're fixers. You know, who do you run to when you got a boo-boo? You run to mama. You know what I mean? You run to mama. Uh, they're protectors. I remember one time we were at the beach, and I don't remember it specifically, but she says that there was a man that kept following us and kind of looking at me because I was such a cute kid. <laughs> you know, uh, Josh is like, wait a minute. This is a story. Okay, maybe it is. But anyway, and uh, I just remember holding her hand the whole time. I do remember that, but she said that happened, and maybe there was a guy that wanted some ugly little kid, but I don't know. Uh, but they're, they're protectors. They're also providers. You know, mothers are providers. Uh, I know fathers are the head of the house, and I know that's how God orchestrated that, but my goodness, I think it's kind of like if the father's the head, I believe mamas are the heart. You know what I mean? Because mamas are the heartbeat of the home. They really, truly are. Uh, they're also comforters when things are broken. I remember when my heart was broken when I was little. I didn't want to run to my dad. I wanted to run to my mom. You know, if I wanted a treehouse built, I'd run to dad. But if I wanted my heart fixed or I wanted to feel better, I ran to mom. And the Bible says in Psalms 139.13, and I showed it to you earlier, the Bible says that you, God, knit me together in my mother's womb. Do you know that he trusted that place to form you? That was the most safe place that God could find. And, it, and, and essentially, it's the most safe place on earth for a child in the mother's womb. 
And so he knit us together, and I meant to tell the children, and I forgot to tell them, but you know, he spoke everything into existence, but you know how he created us, don't you? With his hands. You know, with his hands, he formed us. Isn't that awesome? That he knit us together in our mother's womb. God chose the womb of Mary to form the God-man Jesus. You Think about that. Psalm 139, 14, the very next verse says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm different than any of you all, and you're different than any of Anybody else is sitting around. We are made in the image of God. The so- safest, most magical place is the womb of a mother. Wouldn't you agree? How in the world does all that happen? God knows. It's like the seed we talked about last week that's planted. And we don't know how it grows. But it grows. You know what I mean? From the womb to the first time that you held your child to the first time you took them to kindergarten. Do you all remember that time? I still remember that. But that's a secret place in a mama's heart. The Bible says in a couple places that Mary pondered these things uh, concerning the God-man Jesus. From kindergarten to graduation, you guys that have graduated a child, how fast does it happen? Just like that. I mean, it goes like that. It's that quick. From graduation and now, you know, whatever your endeavor is, I believe there's never been a moment where your child has not been on your heart and on your mind. Would you agree, moms? Yeah, never a moment. Not a sleeping moment, not a waking moment. My mom used to call me sometimes in the mornings, real early before I got to go, and she says, is everybody okay? Yep, I'm good. How's Leanne? Good. How's the kids? Good. I had a bad dream. You know, <laughs> Raise your hand if you ever had a bad dream. You know, so, Yeah, so you guys get it. You know, And you're always on uh, your mama's heart. Mothers feel what their children feel. You know, mothers can feel it way before fathers can, it seems like. They feel what their children feel. When, when kids hurt, mothers hurt. Mothers are connected to their children in an unexplainable and untamable way. And when I say untamable, I kind of mean it like this. Don't mess with mama. You know, when I'm at work and I'm dealing with a kid and I call, I usually, I don't do it, I don't do it on purpose but I naturally go to mama's number and call her first. Because I know if I want to get to the kid, I get to mama. Does that make sense to you? I almost always call mama first. That's just the way it rolls. Uh, and then if I can't get a hold of mom, I'll call dad. But, but mamas are untamable. Have you ever seen a, a, a duck or a goose on a, on a river trying to get you away from her little ones? You know, that's like a mama. That's who mamas are. You know, Leanne used to make Drew and Sophie sit and read and do their schoolwork before uh, going out to play. While she fixed dinner, I was responsible for reading to them. And what would I do each and every time? Go to sleep. I'd fall asleep. She took pictures of me going to sleep. I'm sitting there with a book, and the kids are kind of looking at her like, what's going on here? But now she did. She would make them sit and do their work before we got to that stuff that was uh, more relaxed and fun. And, and she was teaching them something. Um, when I think about how they're doing in college now, you know, they're making it because of their mama. If that would have been left up to me, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'd have probably let them scoot on by with doing it halfway, you know. But mamas are like that. I've watched her keen sense of smell as she sniffed out their needs and as she sniffed out a phony, you know, a fraud, a, a friend that shouldn't be a friend. I've watched her keen sense of, what's the word I'm looking for, discernment. Mamas are discerning. Just the right time, she has the word for their, uh, their need. And that moment of vulnerability, I've watched her do that. She's my wife, but she's their mother. I've also watched her, like a mother goose, flog any threat to their safety. <laughs> you, know, mamas, you, ever see, you guys ever seen your mama flog any threat to their safety? Yeah, husbands, you've seen that too, haven't you? But the Bible again says, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So mamas... Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for making us. God created us, but you made us. And so that's the title of my message today is My Mama Made Me. And uh, Mama made me do a lot of things that I didn't maybe not want, didn't want to do, but Mama made me. I'm going to tell you a story, and then I'm going to get back to my mom just a little bit. In the Second Kings chapter 4, I'm just going to give you an overview. The prophet Elisha, the man of God, the one they went to to hear the word of God, was shown hospitality by a woman from Shunem. And in the Bible it says she was the Shunem, Shunemite woman. That's what they call her. I don't know if she had a name. I'm certain she did, but it doesn't identify her. But it says it identifies her as a Shunemite woman. 
he and his servant Gehazi, Elisha's servant Gehazi, they, when they come to Shunem, the area there, um, this Shunemite woman would feed them and have them come in. And, and she went to her husband one day and said, hey, let's make him a room, this man of God. He's a godly man. He's a prophet. Let's put him on the roof and let's give him a bed and a couch and, and let's give him a table and a lamp. And her husband said, okay, that sounds good. And so they did that. And so one, one day when he was there and she was showing hospitality to him, he decided to ask her if she needed anything. Like, what can we do for you? You have been so hospitable to us. And so he sends his servant Gehazi to ask the Shunammite woman, what can we do for you? Can we speak to the king for you? Can we, can we do And she says, no, I have a home among my people. And then Gehazi, evidently he had spent some time there, told Elisha, hey, she doesn't have any children. And her husband's getting really old. She don't have a son. And I guess to carry on the name, she needed a son. And so Elisha told her, said, within a year, a year from today, a year from now, you'll have a son. And she says to him, don't tease me like that. You know, kind of, don't, don't give me empty promises. But a year passed, and it's a short passage, in just a verse or two. A year passed, she bore a son, and then one day the son was out with the father doing some work with the reapers. He got a major headache, so the father brought him to who? The Shunammite woman, the, the mother, and said he's sick. And so he sits on her lap, and that's where we sit when we're sick. He sits on her lap, and he passes away. He dies. And so the lady, I'm certain, went through all kinds of emotions, but she took him and put him upstairs where the man of God, Elisha, resided when he stayed in town, and she put him on his bed. And then she asked her husband for permission to go seek out Elisha. She went and sought out Elisha. She said, did I not, did I ask for this child? Did, did, is this something I asked for? And now he's, you know. And so Elisha sends Gehazi ahead and puts his staff on on the boy, and she says, I'm not going to leave you, Elisha. And so Elisha and the Shunammite woman trekked back to the house. And when they got there, Elisha goes in by himself, and Elisha lays on the boy and breathes life back into him. That's basically what happened, okay? That's the overview of the story. And then when he comes out, he brings the child and says, your child's alive. She thanks him and whatnot. And the stories about Elisha and Gehazi continue throughout Second Kings. But then we get to chapter 8. And that's what we're going to pick up in chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read it in its entirety, and then I'm going to break it apart for you. Gehazi and Elisha have a a splitting, so to speak, and Gehazi is now with the king. And chapter 8, verse 1 says, Then Elisha spoke to the woman whose whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can. For the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. Verse 3 says, I'm going to go back. Verse 3 says, At the end of seven years, she came back from the land of the Philistines and went to appeal to the king for her house and her land. The king was talking to, the, to Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, and, he, and had said, tell me about all the great things Elisha has done. And just as Gehazi was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, the woman whose son Elisha had brought back to life come to appeal for, to the king for her house and her land. And Gehazi said, this is the woman, my lord the king, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. Do y'all believe that coincidence is coincidence or that nothing just happens. I believe nothing just happens. It just so happened that Gehazi was talking to the king at the same time that this woman, the, the Shunanite woman, had come with her son to plead for her land back. And then verse 6 says, The king asked the woman about it, and she told him. And then he assigned an official to her case and said to him, Give back everything that belongs to her, including all the income from her land from the day that she left the country until now. Verses 1 and 2. Gifts from my mom. says, Elisha spoke to this woman. Arise and go, there's going to be a famine. You know, mothers teach us sacrifice. If you think about it, you know dads do too, but really I learned that from my mom. 
you know, the ability to pick up and go wherever you can. The Bible says, go and stay wherever you can. You know, in this trek of life, when I think about a mother, you don't always know the answers and don't always know exactly how you're going to do what you're going to do. But I remember when I was young, I never went without. I had a pair of blue shoes from Kmart. You remember those blue shoes? And every year before school started, I'd get a new pair of blue shoes, you know. Uh, and I would always look forward to August when I'd get my new pair of little blue shoes from Kmart. And then I grew out of that. I finally got my first pair of Nikes in the ninth grade. And uh, I thought that was the coolest thing around. But, you know, mama sacrifice so their kids can have. And, and this woman in the Bible, the Shunanite woman, it says, when Elisha said, arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine, she left everything. Why? For her household. You know, when I, as, I, as I teach and do the things I do in the school system, I see so many mothers sacrificing for their children. And I'm thankful for those mothers, and I'm thankful for you. But we see that in the Bible here. It says, So the woman arose and did according to the saying of the man of God, and she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines for seven years. You know, raising kids, here's the deal. You ladies have this idea of how things are going to work and work out, and then children are born. And you end up going to a land that you're a foreign land for seven years. True? You end up going to this place that you never thought you'd go to. And you think you might lose some things. And you do. You lose, you lose some stuff uh, as, as you raise your kids. And we're going to see the end of this story how God gives back not just what you lost, but interest. He gives back the proceeds from the land. And that's kind of like grandchildren and, 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 and such. But verse 3 says, It came to pass at the end of the seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines. But I want to talk about verse, verses 1 and 2 first, and then we'll go to verse 3. The Shunammite woman obeyed the man of God and took her family away. My mother worked three jobs when my brother was in college. She worked. She was a bus driver. Still does that. She uh, sold home interior, and she worked at the Hilton's Food Center. Do y'all remember when it was the Hilton's Food Center? Y'all remember that? But she worked three jobs. She did whatever it took to uh, to get us through, so that my brother could go to school and and so that I I could have Nikes in the ninth grade. Uh, you know, fathers are charged with being the head of the, ho- head of the home. But I think it's mothers most often who connect the dots so that their kids are fed, clothed, and in the right place. That's been my, uh, that's been my experience with mothers and grandmothers. They connect the dots, and I'm thankful for that. So my mama taught me sacrifice. Gifts from mother, sacrifice. Her wants and desires came second so that I could wear Nikes. Yeah. They were white, and, and they had, a, they had fluorescent, fluorescent red, like fluorescent pink, about the color of your shirt, Kathy. That's what they were. They, they had fluorescent Nikes. I thought I was cool. It was my first set of Nikes, and I was a ninth grader in high school. Verses 3 through 5. It says, it came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines, and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. She wanted back what she had lost. You know, I think in raising kids, you lose some things. You lose this need to have the dishes always clean and the shoes always in order in the laundry room. You know, if you come to our house even now, there's shoes everywhere. Because we've just lost the, I, we don't care at that point. You've, lo- you've lost the need to have your floors completely shiny all the time and no scuff marks. You know, the need for everything, the OCD mom, that's kind of out the door after you have kids, you know. You kind of lose some things. And she goes back to the king and she says, I, I want those things back, those, those things that I lost when I, when I went away. He says, then the king talked with Gehazi, the man of God's servant, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, please, all the great things Elisha has done. And just about it, just at the right time, here comes this Shunammite woman and Gehazi, and they're both kind of around the presence of the king. And I think it's neat how mamas do. They just do. And like they put their kids in the right situations at the right times. And coincidentally, but I don't think that, I believe nothing just happens We see that not only are needs met, but we also find that our mamas are the ones that help us to carve out our gift and figure out who we are. You know what I mean? That kind of comes from mom. I believe dads should and do teach our children how to be tough and 
how to be honorable and all that stuff. But I think the deeper parts of me and the deeper parts of you come from our mother. Verses 3 through 5, God's timing is always perfect. She had her son with her if you read the text. She didn't go and, and petition the king by herself. How many of you had to go with your mother to sell home interiors? I did. <laughs> I had a ball, and I would go to the back yard while she sold home interior. She did the part. Y'all did a party or something. It was called a home interior party. You ever been to one of those? Raise your hand, please. I want to see. Okay, y'all been there. And this boy would be in the back with a ball, you know, playing. So mamas take, take us with them. You know, my brothers used to, uh, they'd go sleigh riding and they'd go hunting and, and my dad. And they wouldn't take me because I was too young. But I don't know that there was anywhere that my mom wouldn't take me. You know what I mean? She just put me in her pocket and took me with her. And so this Shunammite woman was the one who went to, uh, to plead her case and she took her son with her. See, what she was doing was teaching her son how to stand up for what she, she believed in so that one day he could have a backbone too. You know, I think my backbone came from my mom. I really do. My ability to wire a house and to, uh, and to do some other things, plumbing, that came from my dad and my papa, but I think my mom helped give me my backbone. And many of you would say the same thing. She also taught me how to fight and stand up for what's right. One time when I was little, this, this, is, a, this is a memory I can't get out of my head. I don't remember what field it was, but she took me. I was about five. She said, we're going to get your brother. And so we go to this place, and he was somewhere he shouldn't have been. And all I can remember is in my mind is she held me with one hand while she grabbed him by the ear with the other hand, you know what I mean, and put him in the car and took him back home. I remember that, you know. And so that fight that I feel like I have sometimes, that comes from mom too, you know, standing up and fighting for what's right. It's like that old wet hen. It's like the mad mama uh, in your office that you got to deal with. You get that from mom. And so my mom not only taught me sacrifice, but she also taught me courage. Walk through this world without courage. Whew. It'd be tough, wouldn't it? You guys know that, don't you? Because at the end of the day, we're going to experience things like loss, uh, loss of life, loss of health. Uh, we're going to experience a lot of things that we have to walk through. You can't walk around. And, you know, my mama taught me courage. And I know many of your mothers taught you courage as well. There was this one time, I'll tell you another story. I'm not going to tell you who it was. But there was a gentleman that came up to the house. And uh, he, it j just wasn't someone that needed to be around. And she ran him off. And a pretty hard-looking character. And it took a shotgun and a <laughs> whatever else to run him off. But he finally left. And uh, she did that more than one time. Uh, but I think about that. That takes some courage to do that. And I think about that as I'm raising my kids. When I see the cultural influences that come, you know, at the kids at the high school or even my two. You know, sometimes I have to run them off with a shotgun, you know, a figurative shotgun. And tell them, don't come back around here. Uh, I was talking to a friend this week who went into the bedroom of, of a young man that he's ministering to with the young man's mama. And they decided to pray out loud. That the spirit that is upon this young man in, this, in his bedroom would leave, and it did. That's how powerful our words are, you know? And so we should take command over those things, but courageously approaching spiritual matters and physical matters, too. Verse 6, I like this part. I like this part of the, of the passage. The king asked the woman about it, and she told him. She told him all about it. Told him the story. You ever heard a mom tell a story about their child? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that can be a good story, can't it? A long story sometimes. But she told him. Then he assigned an official to her case and said this. Give back everything that belonged to her. I want to say this to the mothers. that The investment that you made in me and us, your children, was worth it. We are because you invested. And the king here gave back everything that belonged to her, including all the income from her land. That's the proceeds. That's the interest that was made, the money that was made from her land from the day she left the country until now. The third gift that I would say my mama gave me was strength. Sacrifice, courage, and strength. 
And the reason I say strength is because, you know, we get to this point where she gets back everything that was taken from her, but it took some major mama strength to get there. We're talking about years. You know, they say that 18 years for somebody to, to become an adult, but I don't, I don't know that a mother ever quits being a mother. I would say that it continues on and on and on, but somewhere in the process, there's moments where I'm sure, mamas, you'd, you almost gave up. You almost quit believing. Or you almost maybe didn't have enough money to get through, or maybe you didn't have the right answer or the right word, and it took some major God kind of strength. And so strength, I believe, comes from my mama. My mama made me strong. You know, my mama made me cream of wheat and oatmeal when I was four years old, and she started riding the bus, driving the bus, and I didn't have a babysitter, so she put me on the front seat of the bus. I'd lay there and sleep until I woke up, and when I woke up, before rubber made, there was mama made, there was a butter bowl with a lid on it with oatmeal in it, and when I, and when I woke up, she'd hand it back to me right through the crack behind the seat. And I'd eat my oatmeal or my cream of wheat. And that's why I like both of them. I love oatmeal and I love cream of wheat. So before rubber made, mama made, you know. You know, my mama also made me pay back the price of the candy that Rodney Moore and I stole from the candy room in like the fourth or fifth grade. Now here's how the story come about. We stole some candy and thought we got away with it and went out to playtime recess and we enjoyed our candy and all we did was walk by the candy room, saw the doors open, we was like, man, let's get some candy. But we stole the candy, okay? So when I got home, I didn't know it, but Miss Williams had called Mom and said, hey, Scotty made 100, which was a miracle. On the test today, you need to pat him on the back. He did good. So I get home, and she says, you got anything you want to tell me? And, of course, I was already convicted. And I was like, yeah, I stole some candy. She, and, of course, she, after she... Uh, well, the rear end speaks to the brain quicker than words. You know what I'm talking about? But so after that, I had to go back in the next day, repay the money, apologize to everybody. And then when, Rod, when, when the teachers and the principal found out, they called Rodney's mom. And so he had to do the same. So anyway, she made me pay back that money. But it taught me repentance. You know what I mean? Repentance. And it also taught me honor. I was convicted because at that moment I had lost my honor, and she had lost hers too. She taught me repentance and taught me honor by making me pay back the candy money that we stole. My mama also made me vacuum and wash the dishes before I went fishing with Eddie Vinder, my best friend. I wanted to fish all the time, but I had to vacuum and wash the dishes. Why? Because she was at the Hilton Food Center working the third job. You see what I mean? So I had responsibility too, so she taught me this, discipline and collective responsibility. And here's what I mean by collective responsibility. We're all in this thing together. You know what I'm saying? It, it takes us all. It takes us all. And it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes us all. It takes everyone in the home to make the home um, uh, operate and efficiently. But she made me vacuum and wash dishes before I could go fishing with Eddie. My mama made me be on time for work. And I started thinking about all those little things. She would holler up in the morning and say, hey, it's 6.30, wake up, it's time to go to school. And that was the only holler I got. I didn't get a second holler. So, Drew, you're downstairs. Drew, I, I give him more grace than my mama gave me. I had to holler him ten times. They'll tell you the truth. No, but really, uh, one time, that was it. She'd holler at me and I'd have to get up. She taught me how to be on time. She taught me how to pay for my gas money. She didn't just throw it out to me, you know. Not that she wouldn't give me money, but she gave me all she had. My mama taught me the little things. She taught me to think before I reacted. Anybody ever teach you that? Yeah, think before you speak. Chew on it. She also taught me to give instead of take. I said this a couple weeks ago, but her and dad always put a garden out. And uh, we eat some of it, but most of it they gave away. And uh, I can tell you the families they gave to, and uh, those families can tell you as well. But they were givers. My mom's a giver. She taught me how to give. You see, my mama gave me a bunch of gifts. But sacrifice, courage, and strength are three things that I, could, I wanted to give to you today that I got from her and that I'm sure that you got from your mama too. And without those three things, I don't, I don't think I can make it.
You see, uh, God created me, but my mama made me. Didn't yours? So thanks, Mom, for making me. And so I wish you a happy Mother's Day, and I hope that today, if your mama's not with you, you can pray to God, and uh, He can speak to her in heaven, and, and you can reunite again someday. But uh, I just pray that, uh, that you have a blessed day, and that you uh, rest, and that you get encouraged, and that God continues to bless you on Mother's Day. All right, let's pray as we dismiss. Heavenly Father, thank you for our mothers. And God, thank you for the role they play in our lives and continue to play in our lives. And God, I know we get busy. I know I do. I get busy as I get older and take on more responsibilities. But God, I just pray that uh, from time to time you would help us to carve out some moments, not only to thank you for our mothers, but also to thank them. And so we pray that you would protect them today, bless them today, and I pray, God, a special hedge of protection around this church and everyone here today, everyone that's represented, each family represented. So, God, now it's, uh, I would be foolish to think that there, there are written some, some folks here that uh, would like a special touch from you, God. Maybe they miss their mom, or, or maybe they feel convicted about you know, uh, a situation in the past. Lord, we, we know that those things are gone and that all things are made new and new. And so I pray a special touch upon those folks who have a hurt place in their heart. Or maybe they just miss their mama. I pray you fill that hole this morning. And Lord, again, I thank you for these ladies. And those who aren't mothers, God, they've been substitute mothers. God, I thank you for my Aunt Pam. Lord, who used to take us to movies and do things for us, God, as a, as a substitute mom from time to time. So I pray for them as well. And Lord, continue to bless this church and continue to protect this church. Thank you for the people you bring here to be a part of this ministry and a part of this team. We're very grateful for that. Continue to build your church. Help us to go now and be your hands and feet to this world. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Anybody got a word? You mama, stop crying now. Mom taught me how to cry, too. Anybody got a word? All hearts and minds clear? If you did not get a He's Fights for You book, please get it before you leave. God bless y'all. Hope you have a